I've never had the best relationship with clothes or been truly confident in my image as a musician. The changing room strikes fear into me, and to be honest, I've never really known how to dress myself. Case in point, I've always been more of a t-shirt and jeans type. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll have noticed that I wore plain black t-shirts in about 95% of my early videos because I had nothing else to wear and I always spent any money I had on guitars and cameras. I felt like I had to invest in my career first before I took care of my appearance and I never really enjoyed shopping for clothes due to my many insecurities. It's only recently that I've learned to be interested in what's in my wardrobe, thanks to my friend, the stylist Lulu Story. Anytime I'm wearing anything cool, it is because of her. Yes, this jacket is because of her. This jacket, she, she told me to get this jacket. Yeah, it's a cool jacket, I like it. <laughs> I've been playing more live shows recently and that's made me take stock of things. Playing live again is an absolute dream after such a long break, but while it's glamorous to have all the eyes in the room on you, if you're feeling insecure or you're hot and sweaty and being photographed from all angles, it can throw you off your game. So good style can help you create an alter ego to perform the very best you can. And I decided I needed to be a little bit more Sasha Fierce and a little less status quo. Popular musicians and their style will trickle down and influence the fashion of their generation. So think the Beatles suits and mop tops, punks ripped t-shirts and safety pins, the strokes and skinny jeans and suit jackets, Billy Gibbons' beard, the list goes on. A band's look can give a sense of unity and cohesion of being in a gang. The Ramones, leather jackets, skinny jeans and bowl haircuts became iconic, inspired by the street hustlers of New York City and the outlaw biker gangs of the Marlon Brando classic, the wild one. In fact, the word punk, prior to being attached to the musical movement of the 70s, was slang for a petty criminal or juvenile delinquent. Their image gave them a reputation. The Ramones are dangerous. The Ramones are a gang. The Ramones are up to no good. T-shirt sales boomed, and they're still one of the most popular band t-shirts of all time, but being a Ramon soon began to feel like a prison for the band's bassist. Inspired by the blossoming New York rap scene, Dee Dee Ramon, the group's chief songwriter and lyricist, wanted to explore a different musical and fashion direction. And I'm a funky man, I got funky bones, I'm a funky man, my name is Dee Dee Ramon. Sadly, it didn't pay off. The music critic Matt Carlson wrote that Dee Dee's rap album, Standing in the Spotlight, will go down in the annals of pop culture as one of the worst recordings of all time. The Beatles also favoured tough guy leather jackets and teddy boy quiffs before pivoting to their suited mop top look, influenced by the work of the French designer Pierre Cardin's space age collarless suits. They enlisted the help of Dougie Millings, a London tailor who would create around 500 garments for the group, including their stage suits for the movie Help. The band kept hold of their original Sgt. Pepper military jackets, but Yoko Ono commissioned the designer Noel Howard to make replica versions for an exhibition celebrating the album. 50th anniversary. Some bands wear a uniform on stage or on album covers, others go further. When The Strokes first started playing gigs, instead of getting into costume for the shows, we talked about how we should dress every day in real life like we're playing on stage. Stroke singer Julian Casablancas told GQ, I don't really care about clothes, but it's about wearing something that gives you social confidence or maybe helps you pick up chicks. With the release of their seminal debut album, Is This It, in 2001, the Strokes not only revitalised guitar music, they changed men's fashion. The baggy t-shirt new metal era ended, and the fashion era, now affectionately known as indie sleaze, began. Cheap suit jackets and thrift stores became the go-to item for a new generation of wannabe rock stars. Sometimes you look back on a group's early press shorts and wonder what on earth they were thinking, but I think the Strokes still look exceptionally cool. Not all performers love the limelight. In fact, some are quite shy, and wearing certain clothing can help them perform as a different version of themselves, giving them a psychological armour to help them face the crowd. There's a story in Nick Durden's book Exit Stage Left about Gary Lightbody, lead singer of the band Snow Patrol. Newly living in LA, because that's what rock stars are supposed to do, he bought an expensive leather biker jacket because that's what rock stars are supposed to do. It's snug, fitted, 
cool. Gary's always been a sensitive, shy man, not totally comfortable with being the centre of attention, but the jacket makes him feel the part. He goes to a bar to meet friends, and among them, there is a new face, one he recognises as Stephen Merchant, the co-creator of The Office. As Gary joins his friends, Stephen notices him, and in his West Country English accent, which I can't do, he exclaims, All right, Mad Max has arrived. Everybody laughs, but Lightbody is completely devastated. His rock star cool evaporating in a second, he doesn't wear the jacket again. Leather jackets aren't just for the boys, of course. Debbie Harry, Joan Jett, Chrissy Hind, Pat Benatar, Janis Joplin, Stevie Nicks and Patti Smith all defined cool in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Diana Ross, albeit in a very different style, has been another fashion icon over the years, with a style that's utterly her own, bringing a flair and flamboyance to the stage that's second to none. And I could talk for hours about Lady Gaga's incredible fashion choices. She's an artist entirely in control of how she wants the world to see her, the very definition of pop star entertainment. You know you're about to experience something spectacular when you see an outfit like that. And let's not forget Rihanna, most recently at the Super Bowl. St. Vincent, Caroline Polachek, Grimes, Lana Del Rey and Anna Calvi have also all created stunning stage personas, ranging from vampire to Hollywood starlet to sword-wielding space alien. Phoebe Bridges, the Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter who's been described as Taylor Swift for girls who have crumbs in their bed, mostly favours a skeleton suit she bought from Amazon. She's worn it in her music videos when performing live and even on the red carpet, she recently rocked a custom Gucci skeletal waistcoat at the Governor's Ball Music Festival in New York City. And of course, there's the late, great Vivian Westwood. While not a musician herself, she had one of the biggest impacts on music and fashion in the 20th century. Her iconic designs ushered in both the ripped clothes and safety pins of the UK punk era and the flowing sleeves and ruffles of the new romantics. This video couldn't possibly conclude without an honourable mention for an artist voted the best dressed man in British history in 2013 by a panel of experts for BBC History magazine. When I go out onto a stage, I try to make the performance as good and as interesting as possible, and I don't just mean singing my songs and moving off. I think if you're really going to entertain an audience, then you have to look the part too," said David Bowie in a 1976 Playboy interview. David Bowie's clothes were an essential part of the personas he constructed to cope with his stage fright. His gender-bending Ziggy Stardust character was inspired by a kabuki, a traditional type of Japanese theatre known for its exaggerated, colourful costumes, and created in collaboration with the Japanese fashion designer Kanzai Yamamoto. His young Americans era jazzy zoot suits are my favourite look, followed by his darkest character, the Thin White Duke. Bowie's close friend, the designer Freddie Barretti, was another major influence on the Starman, tailoring the beautiful razor-sharp baby blue satin suit worn in the Life on Mars video. In 1996, he wore a Union Jack frock coat made for him for his Earthling tour by a still relatively unknown British designer called Alexander McQueen a recent graduate of Central St. Martin's School in London. Bowie's style has influenced numerous fashion designers and artists all around the world, and his influence is well-worn by modern pop stars like Harry Styles and Lady Gaga. But even icons need a day off. One of the most famous men in the world, when he wanted to be anonymous and walk the streets of New York, he donned cargo shorts and a baseball cap. The perfect disguise. Thank you for watching to the end. I really, really appreciate it. Let me know whose style you've always admired in the comments below. And I'll be touring my debut album in 2024, so please consider signing up to my newsletter and letting me know where you are in the world so I know where to play. But as always, I'll be seeing you here very, very soon.